Welcome to this edition of Jacksonville University's The Dolphin Channel News. I'm Salita Gorman, bringing you news from JU's campus and our local community. Shining into the spotlight, Professor of Nursing Linda Schubert has been selected as part of a statewide health care simulation advisory panel. As a new group, the steering committee of the Florida Healthcare Simulation Alliance, organized by the Florida Center for Nursing, works to establish standardized procedures for nurse simulation techniques across Florida. The organization will work to improve nursing education as well as the state's nursing workforce. With the help of a grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida, the Alliance will assist in the advancement of simulation technology in academic settings and healthcare institutions. J.U. Schubert will play a key role in representing private and independent colleges as well as universities as she offers input for the Alliance. The standards will help to ensure Florida students to remain well prepared for their future careers. JU's aviation program reaches great heights, acquiring a new advanced flight training device. Reporter Sarah Mecklenburg brings us the details. The state-of-the-art simulator arrives this summer, giving students the first realistic, fully operational training in flying passenger jets. For Captain Wayne Sisko, assistant professor of aeronautics, the simulator represents the perfect teaching tool. The new simulator is a very expensive half million dollar training device. It replicates a CRJ-700 regional jet cockpit exactly except that it has no motion. But it satisfies the level five flight training device. It is a perfect teaching tool for our students to go to the next level of jet transports. We've been planning for this for, for quite a few years. It benefits students because right now, if they wanted to do this type of training, they would have to wait actually until they get hired by the airlines. We've chosen to do it at Jacksonville University because then it gives them the complete package. We can also use it in our crew resource management capstone course, some of our ATC training, and other courses that we teach. It'll be a very great benefit to the students. I'm absolutely excited for it. I'm going to be the first one of the first classes to go through it. I'm delighted to have this here and have the opportunity to be able to help bring it to the students here at Jackson University. It's a great program and it'll be a really good augmentation to what we're trying to do here. The flight training device will be the first passenger jet simulator of its kind available on a university in Northeast Florida. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel, I'm Sarah Mecklenburg. The new simulator will be housed on campus in the Davis Aviation Center. And now it's time for the latest updates in the Dolphin Spring Seasons. volleyball team had a hard start to their season after dropping their first two games at home. The sand volleyball team was able to bounce back as they made their first win against FAU and placing fifth at the UNF Invitational this past weekend. Freshman Carl Whitmire and sophomore Kendall Courtney earned all tournament honors. A lot of good teams out here so it's fun to see how much we've improved in practice against the really good teams. It's going to get really popular. Just as you can see, people are walking up on the beach and looking at it. So it's cool to be a part of that. And we started out kind of rough, but it's picking up. We're kind of all a little inexperienced at sand, but we're learning pretty fast. Courtney and Whitmire finished tied for third in the gold bracket of the tournament that helped JU earn the fifth spot. Florida State won the team title, followed by Hawaii in the College of Charleston. 
The game will be at Stetson on Tuesday. In other sports, women's lacrosse and their ranked offense steps out with a fast start. Being named the number one offense last season, the lacrosse team uses momentum to create a 7-2 winning record, marking the Dolphins' best start in team history. For Coach Mindy McCord, it comes down to experience. All right, we win drop balls. I wouldn't say we're doing a lot of different things from last year. You know, I think we made a lot of changes from the first year to the second year. But the, the main thing this year is, you know, we have an upper class team now and, um, you know, we're more experienced. So I think that we're just building on the systems and we have had more practice now to be able to execute our systems. And, and I think that experience has given us a lot more confidence. Despite their early success, Coach McCord wants the team to stay focused, taking each game one at a time. I think we're, we're just trying to stay focused on 2012, um, you know, what we do and what we execute and, you know, maintaining um, the focus on our team versus the opponent. You know, I think we have a, a really great game plan. Um, we spend a lot of time preparing and scouting and, um, you know, working on these things at practice. And if we just stay focused on our game plan and our players individually on their personal goals that relate to that game plan, um, I think we can have a lot of success. With their first graduating class in team history, the Dolphins plan to take advantage of their experience on the field. The Lady Finns plan to end their season on a high note, working towards another conference title. On another note, our men's lacrosse captain is on a streak, scoring himself to a school record. Starting midfielder and three-year captain, junior Cameron Mann scored at least one point in every game since the Dolphins' opening match, summing up to 38 games in a row. I didn't realize I was on a streak until a couple of weeks ago uh, our media guy Jim came up to me and he mentioned it. It is an individual accolade but a lot of guys I think kind of support me in it and they know that I couldn't really do any of it without them. Knowing what your teammates are going to do, building that chemistry is just really what you need to do to try and succeed in every game you play. You go out there and you're making 100 plays not even touching the ball and we're scoring lots of goals, that's just as great as scoring 10 goals a game. And so it's kind of a whole team streak instead of just mine. Man's teammates know his work ethic and leadership skills are paying off. When Cam's on the field, he's he's just everything's a lot goes a lot smoother. Especially being his, I've been his line mate for three years, and it's just everything's a lot easier when he's on the field. He makes a lot of things happen. On the practice field, he's always the loudest one. He's trying to get everybody rallied up because how you practice is how you play. So he really just goes hard all the time. You don't see him take any plays off. We've only been on program for three years now, and he's setting the bar high for anybody who wants to come in and try to set a new record. He scored in every single one of our games. It's like a 38 game streak, and it's pretty pretty. Remarkable that he's been able to do that every game. Mann represents the first player in school history, scoring over 100 career points with 49 goals and 55 assists. Make sure to show your support for Mann and his teammates at the remaining home games. Head baseball coach Terry Alexander hits his 700th win. With his 22nd year as head coach underway, Alexander celebrates his 700th win defeating USF in a 9-2 victory. As his last season with the Dolphins comes to an end, Coach Alexander credits his players' hard work as what has contributed to his successes. I've had a lot of really good players, and, and uh, you know, I don't know that uh, coaches win a lot of games, players win those games. And we but, work hard, and, you know, I get on them, and, and they try to, uh, try to please me as far as, uh, you know, the fundamentals are concerned, and then they get better, and then everybody's happy. And I think uh, the good players make good coaches. But it was good to, to be here and, and uh, you know, this is part of my life and, and uh, I have enjoyed every minute of it. Alexander's players take pride in the program, honoring their head coach. Coach Alexander, he's a great coach. Uh, I mean, he's been around for years now and uh, he's got a lot of experience, cares for his teammates. And, uh, you know, we just go out there every day, has a lot of enthusiasm, really tries to motivate us, uh, let it, make us go out there and play hard and uh, just have fun. So uh, he's a great coach and he uh, just tries to inspire us and get us going. I think that TA, one of TA's best coaching qualities is not only his experience, but uh, also his, his relationship with his players. Uh, he's a very personable guy. He's very caring. 
Um, not only does he care about how well you do on the field, but off the field as well. Before every game, when we go out to the field, he comes up to the dugout and says, give me nine. And uh, that gets everybody fired up and we enjoy that. And uh, T.A. is a good person. He's, he's a Southern boy. He's good with relating with all our players and he knows how to talk to us. He knows, how, he knows each of us individually and that's, I think, a big part of coaching. Alexander has a winning overall record of 695 to 552, bringing in seven conference titles and 14 regional appearances. Named Conference Coach of the Year on three occasions, Alexander coached 35 All-America honorees, 67 All-Conference selections, and helped 48 players to get drafted by Major League Baseball organizations. Come out and show your support for Coach Alexander and his Dolphins at their next home game. Switching gears, Hoopin' for Humanity raises awareness on the Dolphin Green. Senior Projects challenge graduating students to push themselves to the limit, testing their skills and determination. Alyssa Fernald, Communications Senior, chose to organize an on-campus event, benefiting Solace for the Children, a nonprofit organization that aims to build peace on a foundation of health by bringing children from Afghanistan to receive medical treatment in the U.S. Hoopin' for Humanity challenges participants to hula hoop as long as they can, raising money for each minute they keep their hoop going. Bernold set the record, hula hooping for two hours nonstop, followed closely by Caroline Coker, who hula hooped for 50 minutes. To make a donation or to learn more about the organization, visit solaceforthechildren.org. Hundreds traveled to North Florida to participate in the annual reenactment, remembering the Battle of Olusty. Reporter Adam Jordan takes us to the historic battlefield. Every year around the February 20th anniversary, reenactment enthusiasts take part in a festival commemorating the Battle of Olusty. Thousands of spectators visit to see the two sides fight one of the more gruesome fights of the war. Engaged in the battle are about 5,000 on each side. Uh, the losses are very heavy for Union or for Federal forces. In fact, uh, um, it, compared to troops engaged, it's one of the bloodiest losses for the Union during the war. I think one statistic argues that it's like the third bloodiest battle. Despite the battle and reenactment taking place barely 50 miles from campus, knowledge of Olusti is hit or miss among JU students. I know uh, the only Civil War battle I do have or know is uh, Gettysburg. The one here in Jacksonville or over in Lake City is Olusti, and I think it's uh, left out too often. Although the battle is celebrated annually as the largest to take place in Florida, in the grand scheme of the war, it wasn't very instrumental in victory. It's, one of, it's a famous Civil War battle as far as Florida historians are concerned, uh, but does not loom very large in the history of the Civil War in general. Uh, so in a survey course, for example, on the Civil War, or a survey course in American history in the mid-19th century, it would never get mentioned. In fact, during the Civil War is really in many ways a sideshow. With everything from authentic soldiers' uniforms to 1860s entertainment and static displays of Civil War weaponry, the festival still does not appeal to everyone. I've never been to the reenactment myself. I've seen pictures of it. Um, I've certainly been invited out there. You know, my good colleague Walker Bland, you know, uh, hosts folks at his house, you know, often in connection with it, and been doing it for years. Uh, but uh, I never have myself. Even though the reenactment only takes place in February, the park and monument are open daily from 8 to 5 for history buffs to tour. Reporting for the JU Dolphin News, I'm Adam Jordan. The annual battle is a carefully choreographed reenactment, attracting visitors from all around Florida. Thanks to alumni donors, the Dolphin Green gets a facelift. With construction in progress, JU's own permanent amphitheater will be completed next fall semester. The stage will be equipped with supportive lighting and new sound features capable to hold big concerts. Performers will be faced to the river, bringing sound towards shipyards while preventing neighborhoods from possible noise. The amphitheater will host various outdoor events throughout the semester, reaching from mock rock to orientation dinner. Future projects include a new golf green and updates to the intramural field. One sorority supports children with a week of philanthropy. The Tri-Delta sorority held their annual Dolphin Days earlier this month, supporting the St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. For Christy Charlebois, Tri-Delt Philanthropy Chair, the event was a huge success. It's been really good. Um, a lot of the Greek life has been supporting us and so has other organizations. And just today at the bake sale, we raised over $200. Students competed in events including Penny Wars, Twister, Dodgeball, and Bingo, raising money for children in need. 
All the proceeds will go to St. Jude's. Welcome back to our new series of Do You Know Jax? Here to talk about this edition's episode is reporter Ethan Wellhausen. Where are we going to this week, Ethan? Well, Salida, this week we will be venturing to Riverside Avondale. It is a unique neighborhood spanning along the banks of the St. John's River. Historic Riverside Avondale remains a haven preserving Jacksonville's cultural and architectural heritage. Riverside Avondale is a, a very eclectic community. A lot of young people, a lot of different ethnic groups. It's just kind of a melting pot. It's not a, like a suburban built up neighborhood where everything's the same. All the shops and everything are owned by local residents and they're really friendly when you go in. When we first bought in 2001, it was a risk because at that time, it was on the cusp of turning around and there was a lot of renovation going on but it, it could have went kind of either way. So we took the risk thinking that it is such a great community that it has to be a positive. Riverside and Avondale, it's remained and it's kind of stayed true to what it's always been. A lot of history and things have been preserved well. Now when people come in they're just amazed at how wonderful this area is and what a great first impression they have when they come here and they're like I would think I was in Charleston or Savannah. Our neighborhood is uh, fantastic because of the uh, people and the proximity uh, to things. We're able if we need to go to the grocery store I can walk to it. I need to go to the drugstore I can walk to it. Have a bite to eat there's plenty of stuff within walking distance. It's a great neighborhood to live in. Having lived in Jacksonville now seven years we kind of kick ourselves for not moving here sooner. Everything you need is right here. It's got restaurants, shopping, health services. It's just an amazing place. I think it deserves to be one of the, the top 10 communities in the nation just because it's been preserved over a lot of years. Jacksonville to me is kind of like the best kept secret and the locals know that. Riverside Avondale is a fantastic community in which to both work, play, and raise a family. With the help of Riverside Avondale Preservation, the community represents Florida's first historic district. Thanks, Ethan. Be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Do You Know Jax? That's going to do it for this edition of Jacksonville University's The Dolphin Channel News. You can find more of our award-winning work on our website at tv.ju.edu or on YouTube under The Dolphin Channel. Also, you can follow The Dolphin Channel on Facebook. I'm Salita Gorman. And I'm Ethan Waldhausen. From all of us here at the Dolphin Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.